Now that you've got an understanding of compositing modes, it makes it easier to understand what some of these other options inside of our media generators do. And we're going to have a very brief look at checkerboards, color gradients, noise textures, and solid colors. Now, there's quite a lot of different options inside a checkerboard, some of which are just checkerboards. And if I drop that on top of the item we've got here, and I click OK and just go over it, you'll see that there is no transparency there. However, we already know that if I was to go to Add, it would get rid of the black. But if I was to go to Multiply, it would get rid of the white. So we know we can do those kind of bits and pieces. But if we were to do cut, it's just going to cut everything because there is no transparency actually inside the item. So I'm going to do source alpha and I'm going to delete that one. However, when you look at some of the others, take for instance this horizontal blinds, you can see what would be a transparency grid showing through. So it's telling us that there is actually a transparency grid behind the lines. So if I drop that one down in place of it, you can see there are the various bits and pieces. And it's telling me that color one here is completely transparent. All the color channels are at zero, including this alpha channel at zero, zero, zero. So when I go over that one, let's just have a little look and go over it where we're over the item. You can see, yes, there's the picture below and there are the various bars. And of course, I can always go back to this item here, generated media, click on it and I can go in and say, well, I want to change that value to some other value, say, go towards, towards a blue value and I can click OK, that's fine. And you can even offset the grid, which is quite fun. So you can actually have it offset slightly up and down, move it around, have a bit of fun. And you can animate these. So if you actually want that moving through, you can actually animate it. Because if you notice, we've got the clock here for being able to animate this. So you can have it going up and down and up and down. And of course, you can apply your appropriate blend modes. So you can go in there and say, I want a difference blend mode, or I want to have, I don't know, let's say uh, an add blend mode. So you can go in and you can play with the blend modes. You can use these different things and create different looks by simply playing with how they're all created. If we just get rid of that one and just choose one more, let's look at this plied one here. And actually look at it, you can see that you can see it's got tile dimensions, so you can change the width and the height, they're locked together, but you can say, I don't want them to be square, so I can actually make them wider than they are. Higher. And again, you can play with all these different bits and pieces. You can use blend mode, you can turn and say, actually, I want that side completely transparent. You've made it completely transparent. Just click over where the image is itself. There you go. You're actually playing with it and you can say, right, I want to change that color and make it completely white. So you can get in there and you can do an awful lot of that, including you can even play with edge blending. Okay, so if we play with edge blend, you can make them a lot softer or a lot harder. So you can decide how you want this to do. And again, you can change vertical and horizontal. Do I want a soft edge in one direction and a hard edge in the other? I can play around with that so I can create some really stylized looks. Blend those together. So I'm going to just choose different squares. And then I can turn around and say, and actually I want to turn down the events effect, have it more or less depending on how I want it to look. So that's playing with the checkerboards. I'm just going to delete that one. You'll see that we've also got color gradients, and color gradients work in a very similar way. Some of them have no transparency underneath. Some of them do have transparency. So if you look at this elliptical transparency tool, drop that one over and click over it, what I've actually got there is a vignette. Okay, so that is a vignette. It's darkening the edges. And if I just take this compositing mode down to source alpha, you can see I've actually got straight away I've got a vignette and I can actually turn down the power of that vignette simply by turning up and down and that's a great way of taking people's distraction from bright corners so that they can look at what matters so you can add these various bits and pieces in again I'm going to delete that one and I'm going to drop in something completely different so let's drop in this uh, item here which is the desert and drop the desert over the top again I'm going to go over it and leave it as is but you can change how this looks. Now you've got different items on here, so I can have more blue in the sky or less blue in the sky. So I can make it a much bluer sky if I want to. I can rotate it and I can decide how I want the, the base to look. I can say, well, actually, you know what, really what I want is more sky and I can pull it down and just have it blue and white. There is a blue and white one or different options that you can have to create it. Now at the moment, I don't have much of a, of a smooth edge, much of a soft edge, but now I've got a much softer edge. And of course, I'm just going to double click to make this the proper size. I can go in and I can change 
I'm fiddling around here, but you can go and you can change the color of one. So you can say, actually, I want it slightly more cyan or lighter. I say, okay, that's an option. I'm actually going to take the white up a bit as well. I'm going to have a softer edge there. Okay, and I'm just going to click OK, and I'm going to multiply that with the background. So when I go to multiply, remember, it gets rid of white. The white disappears, but I end up with a really strong cyan in the sky. And I've kind of colorized the sky by using this overlay. And you'd have thought that you can turn down the effect by turning down the opacity, but when you turn down the opacity, the blend mode will just make the item disappear. So then to make a change, you go back here, and you say, really, if I want to make it slightly brighter, hold the control key to make that floating, I might actually want to make it brighter here. Just simply pull it up here to make it a brighter blue to turn down the effect okay just simply dragging here to change how it looks okay so that's just added that effect you can have a really deep look or you can have a really light look or if you want to colorize it entire, entirely so say really I want to have a an orangey early morning or early evening look I'd need to do other things to make it look better but you can see you can play around just by using the blend mode and applying one of these media generators and playing with them and you can play around with them you've got lots of different versions you can go with Solid colors work in exactly the same way. So if I want to colorize an image, say I want to add a, a, an item in here. Sorry, I'm just going to turn this blend mode back to source alpha so I can see things. Here's a solid color. I can drop in an orange solid color. Again, I'm over the top. I can change how the color looks if I want to reduce its opacity a bit. So I want to reduce its opacity, which maybe I do. And I can just turn around and say, right, I'm going to add a multiply on that one. And then I've created a really, that's actually quite a strong evening, a bit too strong. But we've made it look evening simply by applying a solid color and then playing with the solid color and then using a compositing mode to be able to change how it looks. So there's an awful lot you can do. Don't discount these things. As well as one other thing I ought to mention on solid colors, which is quite powerful, actually. I'm going to just drag in a blue here. I'm going to turn my blend modes. I don't need to worry about blend modes for this example. So I'll take it back to alpha. And I've got this particular one here, and I just want to just show you one little tip. When it comes to effects, if you have got the Boris FX, the Continuum Complete Suite, and you go to your Boris FX, you've got a whole different set of options that need to be applied to something. So, for example, I've got textures here, and I could say, well, I want clouds or I want, say, granite. Here's granite. Drag and drop it onto this item. And when I let go, you can instantly see granite has been created. It's been created on that solid color. It needed something to put the effect onto, and using a solid color is often a very good way of doing that. Let me just apply one other really fun one. We'll do this in more detail a bit later on, but we've got one here called 3D Objects. When you go to 3D Objects, you'll see that you've got extruded text. And if I was to pull extruded text and drop that onto the blue, and then it says, click on the launch text window. Here's the text window, and I was just to put text and I'm just going to center justify that and click apply okay I've got 3d extruded text and I can play with the extrusion and I can actually make that rotate in 3d space and if I put something underneath it so let me just uh, bring in the the image underneath you'll see that if I click over there you see that that is 3d text and what you can do with that, you can make it shatter. As I say, we'll do a tutorial a bit later on in that. But one of the really great advantages about solids and what have you is that you can apply these BCC bits and pieces too to create some incredible looks. And we'll look at a few more uh, looks that you can do with art looks and what have you. BCC is a very powerful package that integrates beautifully inside of Sony Vegas and is very worthwhile having. In the next tutorial, because we're running out of time, I will have a very brief talk about this one here, noise textures, and the bits and pieces that that can do to create some very interesting looks. My name's Andrew Davison. Thanks for watching.